Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. Hey, podcast listener. Welcome to the Overseas Prop Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor White. In a few moments, we'll be hearing from a credit insider about the best ways to achieve and maintain the cleanest credit report and highest credit score possible. A great resource that's recommended and the only one authorized by federal law is annualcreditreport.com. It's not a sponsor of this episode, just a great way to get a free copy of your credit report every 12 months from each credit reporting company. That's annualcreditreport.com. Today we hear from an absolute credit insider when I sit down and speak with Mike Greiner, who has been featured in Fox News, Yahoo Financial News, CBS News, ABC News, The Business Journal, and countless other publications about the best game plan to get or maintain great personal credit scores. Just a few episodes ago, we heard from mortgage insider Tim Lucas about the best mortgage loans to use to get cash for overseas real estate and a huge piece of getting approved and at a great rate is with a great personal credit score. Instead of telling you more, let's join Mike from the Get Paid Strategies headquarters. Mike, what's going on? It's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the podcast today, straight from the Get Paid Strategies headquarters. So we can get to know you personally. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm glad to be here, Taylor, for starters. You've got a great podcast. You're doing a real service for a lot of people. But basically, I'm an attorney. I represent uh, individuals and companies who are dealing with debt issues, both in terms of dealing with too much debt on their part, as well as also not getting paid debts that they're owed. And I've helped a number of clients with credit repair and getting financing and things like that. Uh, so uh, obviously credit issues is, a, is something I'm pretty familiar with. So Michael, I know you've been cited in hundreds of outlets, including Fox News, Yahoo Financial News, The Business Journal, The Business Review, have a brand new book out entitled Get Paid, Big Business Collection Strategies for the Small Business Person and founder of the Anthony Law Firm. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself professionally? Uh, sure, yeah. You know, one thing I have done a lot of is I've done a lot of writing. Um, I do enjoy doing that. Um, I started doing it when I wrote a book called Bankruptcy 101 to help people kind of understand bank the bankruptcy process. But again, since I represent people on both sides of the table, I represent both the creditors and the debtors, I felt that it was important to cover that. And that's where the Get Paid Strategies book came into play. Uh, there are obviously a lot of issues right now. People are very upset about the way the banks have behaved, and I am too a lot of the time. But, uh, you know, it's a difficult situation that they find themselves in too. So really, we're dealing with a very complex and changing legal environment right now, and that's really what I'm in the middle of. So, Michael, out of all the great things that you focus on, I really want to deep dive into personal credit scores. I have an overseas real estate audience, and a big part of that equation is mortgage financing. Since getting mortgage financing overseas is getting tougher and tougher, many people are looking at obtaining a cash out refi or maybe a line of credit on their personal residence inside the U.S. And of course, to get the best rate and terms, having a great credit score is important. So Michael, I really want to just dive into it. And I know that you recommend getting three credit cards. Can you talk more about why getting three credit cards is important? And then if you recommend using these or getting them and then just putting them away. Okay, well, the, both great questions. And let me start by saying this, though. You know, one thing that I think is important to know is that the way that the credit bureaus, and there are three main ones, Equifax, TransUnion, and uh, and the way that these credit bureaus work is that they they kind of take all kinds of information that they're able to glean from all kinds of different sources, both public information and information that uh, that they receive directly from the creditors. And what they do then is they have essentially a, a, a program that they apply to that information to decide what your credit score is. Each of the three credit bureaus is going to come up with a slightly different number 
as a result of that, because the way that they figure out what your credit score is, is something that's proprietary and is something that they only include internally. So the way I, the way I talk about it sometimes is very much the way the Google searches, you know, we can, we can, you know, we can make, we can make guesses about the way that the, uh, that the Google search is going to come up, but we really don't know how Google is doing it internally. And it's the same way with the credit bureaus. So that being said, the number one thing that I have seen, and I've heard this from a number of loan officers who I've represented, from banks I've represented, from all kinds of different people, and I've actually sued the credit bureaus a number of times, so I've been on the opposite side from them, and I've also represented them at times. And one of the things that they all say is the number one thing that improves your credit score is having a record of making timely payment on debts. And that's where the three credit cards come in. You want to have at least three credit lines where you are charging a little bit each month and paying it off on time each month. And it's that constant use and paying it off every month that improves the credit score over time. And then, Mike, I know that there's really two main credit cards. There's unsecured credit card and there's a a secured credit card. Can you talk about more about what the difference is? Absolutely. Well, this unsecured credit card is the typical credit card that we think of, that you get something in the mail and then you're allowed to charge up to a certain amount of money because they give you a credit line. And uh, that's great for people who have credit that's not very good, though. Sometimes the only way they're able to get a credit card is by getting what's called a secured credit card. And what a secured credit card is, is that they say, hey, give us five hundred dollars ahead of time. We'll hold on to that money. And it's not like a debit card, like what you get from your bank where you're doing withdrawals from that amount. But essentially, the bank holds on to that money in case you don't make your payments. And it allows them to give you credit and to use a real credit card that's still going to have the uh, positive reports to the, uh, to the credit bureaus as you make your payments on time. But uh, it's something that's available to people where they might not really be able to get a credit card otherwise. So that's really where the uh, secured credit cards come in as being valuable. So then, Mike, who's the type of clientele that gets a a secured card? It sounds like maybe someone just starting out or someone that that has bad credit. That's exactly right. Yeah. In fact, a lot of my bankruptcy clients, that's really a place that they need to start to rebuild their credit. But I'll tell you, they are fantastic ways to rebuild credit. They work very well. And most of my clients within a year, uh, they're finding that uh, their credit actually has built up to be uh, quite strong. And they're getting offers then from other credit card companies or even that credit card company suggesting lines of credit that are unsecured, where they're basically saying, hey, look, we trust you. You've shown that you're a good customer. You're the kind of person who doesn't abuse credit. And uh, as a result, of that, we're willing to extend you some credit. So then, Mike, what should people look for in credit cards? And off the top of your heads, do you have any favorites? Well, I'll tell you. Number one thing that I suggest is uh, I'm a big fan of Consumer Reports, and they actually do do a regular analysis on the different credit cards. And it's a constantly changing thing. So uh, anybody who's a member of Consumer Reports, I definitely suggest that you go to the Consumer Reports website. You know, I think it's just ConsumerReports.com. Right. Uh, and they have some great information on some of the different offers that are out there. I guess the number one thing that I would suggest is not to get enamored with the offers that they're making. Okay. Let me let's start with an assumption, which is that if a credit card company is saying, hey, we're going to give you cash back or we're going to give you miles or we're going to give you something like that then that is the type of thing that they're making money on. Right. Uh, They do not give away credit. They do not give away money. So if there is anything that they're offering you, uh, it's generally speaking a bad deal for you, actually. So the best the best thing that I suggest for people to look for is look for low costs, low fees and low interest rate, because those are really the things that that really make a difference in your lives. You know, there are certain credit cards that charge an annual fee. Try to avoid those. There are certain credit cards that have higher higher interest rates. If you go where you have a month where you don't make the payment, you'd be amazed how fast those credit card bills add up with the interest that they charge and the late fees and everything. So number one thing is look for low cost. And then really, again, by paying off your bill on time, you're not paying a lot of interest anyway. So those are really the things that I suggest people look for. So the mic on the show, we have a lot of, I guess it would be quote unquote travel hackers, people that try to hack the system to try and get things for traveling. One of them is they get airline miles to sign up for credit cards. And it kind of sounds like that might be a little bit too tricky for most people. And that what you might recommend is be a little bit more sensible and get the credit based off of getting great rates because you're going to pay it off and don't get them based off trying to get something from the credit card company. 
That's exactly right. They do not give away things unless they're making money off of it. That's the thing you need to start with. And uh, so if there's something being given away that seems like it's a great deal, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that there is some way that the credit card company is making money off of it. When you really delve in deeply, for example, with some of these credit cards where they give you the cash back and you think, well, right. cash back, that sounds pretty good. But you end up paying for it several times over over the course of the time that you've got the credit card. So it really ends up not being a good deal. So I guess it's not the more you spend, the more you save then, right? <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, it's about really what it's about is it's about responsible usage. And that's really what they're looking for in terms of good credit, which is use it a little bit. You don't use it all the way to its max. You pay it off on a regular basis. You have a regular habit of paying on time. Those are the things that are really going to improve your credit score. And then, Mike, as a follow-up, can you talk more about why it's important to monitor our credit scores and credit reports, and then maybe if you have any great free sites that we can use? Oh, definitely. Well, uh, there are a couple things that I think people need to bear in mind with that. Now, for starters, there's always talk about, oh, the credit reports, they're inaccurate. They have lots of inaccuracies. And actually, the biggest surprise I've had dealing with credit reports, and I've looked at literally thousands and thousands of credit reports, is how accurate they are actually. Uh, it's really shocking from a from a perspective of someone who might be concerned about your privacy, that they have literally up to the minute information on everything you've charged, all the, any lawsuits out there against you, any issues that are potentially pending. It's really quite amazing how accurate they are. So that really the bigger issue that you're looking for, I think, when you're getting your credit report would be really identity theft. And that is a big problem both in the United States and worldwide, which is that people do anything they can to try to get your credit card information and then use it. And that's really what you're going to be looking for. And I can tell you, I've represented a number of clients who've been the victims of identity theft, and it is a bear to get it sorted out. It's a now, nightmare, right? If, it's a nightmare. It is. And it usually involves bringing the police in and you have to uh, file police reports and then you have to be able to essentially prove that you are not the one charging it. I mean, it's almost like a you're guilty until proven innocent type situation. So uh, it's very difficult to deal with. Um, and that's really what you're watching for. You want to watch and try to spot those things before they get out of control. And it takes you a whole lot of time and effort to undo it. The good news is, is that the laws are very favorable. And, you know, there's a lot of advertising sometimes about how, oh, you know, this credit card, there was a fraud. And then they uh, and then they didn't, you know, put that on my on my charge. But the fact of the matter is, that's the law. You know, they don't really have a choice about that. They really trump it as if they're being good guys by doing it. But uh, if you spot something that's not a correct charge and you report it to the to the uh, uh, credit card company, they're required. They are required under the law to remove that. So that's really what you're looking for when you're looking for your, uh, your credit reports. Now, one of the big surprises that I've found, actually, in terms of the identity theft thing, and this is something that really people should be aware of, though, is... You know, there's this big myth about, you know, uh, things being stolen over the Internet and, you know, different uh, organized crime families trying to use um, <laughs> trying to use, you know, the Russians. And, exactly. Right. And the reality is that's really not what most identity theft is. Most identity theft, truth be told, is friends, family members, people who, you know. And so it just speaks to the fact that really you need to guard this information very carefully. And it's something that you, you know, it's unfortunately you never know when when something can become an issue. You know, I've represented many people where, you know, children get themselves in trouble at college or, you know, there might be a drug issue or something like that. And those are actually or gambling issue. That's another one. Uh, those are really the times that you see identity theft more frequently. And that can be a big problem. So that's really where you need to guard it from. You know, so the people who are all concerned about putting their information over the Internet. That's actually not the primary concern that they've got. Now, in terms of monitoring the credit scores, I definitely suggest a couple of websites. One, which is to monitor the credit scores. And this is actually a free website. And unlike some of these other websites that you see advertised that really actually aren't free, despite what their names say or what their right. advertisements say, this website is free and it's called creditkarma.com and it's C-R-E-D-I-T-K-A-R-M-A.com. And I have no personal or business association with them other than the fact that I use it actually for myself personally to monitor my own credit. And um, they, uh, the way that they make their money though is through advertising, where what they will do is that they will look at your credit score and then they will suggest different products that might save you money based upon what your credit score is. And for most people, that can actually be a useful feature because if they suggest a credit card where you can get a lower interest rate by virtue of the fact that you've got good credit, that's something probably that you want to know. 
you know, so you don't mind being advertised with something like that. So that's a great website to go to. And they will give you your real credit score. And I think it's from all three bureaus. I can't remember specifically, but uh, it might be from, but I, I believe it's from all three bureaus. So it's a very, it's a very useful website to go to. And the other website then that uh, I suggest all Americans be aware of is, uh, and this is something that was created under federal law, is a website called annualcreditreport.com. And that website is a, a great website for people to go to. So annualcreditreport.com, and that's actually a website set up by the three credit bureaus as a result of a federal law that requires the credit bureaus to provide you with a, one free copy of your credit report every year. And you can go there and you can get one of the credit reports from each of the bureaus every year. And uh, it's a great website to go to. I definitely suggest that people get their credit report at least once a year. And that's a great way to do it from that website. It is free. There is no ongoing obligation. It is required under the law that the credit bureaus do this. So those would be the two websites that I really uh, appreciate and certainly take advantage of myself. Mike, those are two fantastic sites. So we're going to run our credit report. What do we do if something's on our credit report that should not be? Well, the number one thing that you have to do is you have to challenge it. And they, they, every credit bureau, and again, they're required to do this under the law, will have a dispute process. It used to be that what you'd have to do is you'd have to send a letter to the different credit bureaus, and I believe the credit bureaus will accept letters still. However, uh, I think the way that they prefer to do it now is by doing it online. Uh, and again, you can access this through the annualcreditreport.com website. When you see your credit report and you think that there's something incorrect on it, they will have a dispute process that you can go through to say to the credit bureau, hey, this information is not accurate. Then the credit bureau has a period of time where they can research, I believe it's 30 days or so, and they have to get back to you and let you know what they found as to whether they believe that it's still an accurate charge or it's an inaccurate piece of information. Generally speaking, again, the information ends up being corrected. And uh, I definitely suggest that people go through uh, the dispute procedure if uh, they see something that doesn't belong there. But again, one thing that people have to be aware of is just because there's a report on the credit report that they don't like doesn't mean it's the kind of thing that the credit bureau will remove. OK, so say, for example, something I've heard a lot would be sometimes people will get an offer to pay off a credit card for less than the full amount that's owed on it. And uh, so they send in that amount and believe that they've paid off the credit card. Well, it appears then on the credit bureau report as being paid for less than full amount, okay? Or settled for less than full amount. It depends what exactly the different credit bureaus call it. And when you see that, it does not have the same kind of value as if you'd paid it for the full amount. And sometimes people complain and say, now, wait a minute, this was an offer I made, I settled it, I resolved it, it should say that I paid it off and, and everything is good. But uh, you actually did pay it for less than the full amount that was owed. And the credit bureau report is going to reflect that then. Mike, as a follow up on that, past 2009 or so, there's a lot of people that had foreclosures that stay on their credit reports. How long do foreclosures stay on your credit report? Well, there are a couple of things to bear in mind on that. The first thing is, it's not actually the foreclosure itself that goes on the credit report. It's actually the payments that you make that are in, that are behind that right. hurt your credit. Uh, because the foreclosure itself is actually a property issue. It's the payments, though, that are a credit issue. Any issue with respect to a credit report will generally stay on your credit report for 10 years. So it's going to be there for 10 years, and that's kind of life. But, you know, the thing that you have to remember is that a credit report at any given time is a snapshot and there's going to be good things on it. and There are going to be some not so good things on it. And so if over time you then rebuild your credit, you can do that just because of the fact that you have had a bankruptcy or you have had a foreclosure in the past doesn't mean that you can't rebuild your credit. It's just a matter of starting fresh and bit by bit building up your credit by showing over time that you have the ability to responsibly use credit and make your payments on time. And that's really what you know having those three credit cards, for example, is all about. So then, Mike, I know that some people recommend making payments more than once a month, say like every two weeks if you get paid every two weeks, as it reduces the debt faster. What do you think of this strategy? Well, it's it can be helpful in that it will, if your goal is to reduce the debt. Now, we're talking about a couple different things here, though, because um, if the goal is just to be somebody who builds up your credit to your credit score to be higher, then that's really not going to have an impact because the credit right. bureaus are just going to look at it and say, you know, hey, 
they made the payment on time. And so making a payment, you know, every two weeks or every week for that matter, isn't going to be any better than making that payment once a month, as long as it arrives before the deadline, you're fine. Okay. In terms of paying down your debt faster, though, there are a number of strategies that you can use for that. Um, and certainly one of them would be making multiple payments on a credit card to try to uh, pay that balance down. And certainly, if you have high credit card balances, that's something that you absolutely should work on paying first. Because again, think of it this way. A lot of these credit cards, they'll charge 15, 18, 20. I've even seen 29. I've even seen into the 50% interest rates with some of these credit cards. And I don't think that there's an investment out there that will give you a 29% return on your investment or a 15% return on your investment. And so if you just look at it that way, you can see how valuable it is to pay off your credit cards and keep the balances low. And then Mike, can you talk more about getting a co-signer and why it might be a great idea if you have less than perfect credit? Well, again, the goal is really where you need to have a couple of these credit lines where they're reporting to the bureaus that you're right. making payments on time. And if you're in a situation where your credit is not stellar and you uh, and and you aren't able to get credit on your own, then one of the ways that you can get it, you know, one of the ways we talked about already is the secured credit card, but another way is to have a cosigner. And essentially having a cosigner on the debt means that that person is also equally liable for the debt as you are. So the truth is, yeah, having a cosigner is a great way to get credit, but I really warn people that if you're the cosigner, you need to monitor the credit card or monitor the debt in any way. And you know, you need to be very careful that at a certain point, if possible, you get taken off as the co-signer. Because unfortunately, I've seen a number of people who've gotten themselves into financial situations where they co-signed for their children or a relative or a friend or something like that. And then even if that person is a responsible person who had the best of intentions, God only knows what could happen. You know, they could lose a job. They could have a have a health issue. They could die. You know, and all of a sudden, you as the co-signer are fully liable for that debt as if you incurred the debt in the first place. And so it's really, it can be a very risky move on the part of some people. It can be very helpful, you know, if you're signing, co-signing for a small credit card and then taking your name off of it after that person's had an opportunity to build up a little bit of credit. But, you know, it over the long, it's probably not a wise strategy for the co-signer. And then, Mike, I just want to clarify something. When you're talking about three lines of credit, are you talking about, for instance, like three credit cards or could one be a credit card, one's a home loan, one's something else, or are you just talking about credit cards? Actually, my experience is that home loans tend not to be the best ones in terms of rebuilding credit. Right. Um, and But uh, certainly car loans are an excellent, can be an excellent credit line. You know, any kind of other secured debt, like if you have a boat loan or if you have a, you know, even computer loans, for example, a lot of people will buy them, like, say, from Dell and uh, finance the computer over time. Nice. Uh, that also is a reported debt then that as you make your payments on time, it will reflect positively towards your credit. One thing that I think is important, though, is there is a point where it can be too much. You know, so if you start to get beyond much beyond three, like if you get four or five, six or more credit lines, you start to get to the point that then they take a different view of it as, oh, that person has too much credit. So really, the place you want to be is around three or four credit lines that you're paying regularly. Uh, and again, that would not be including your mortgage payments. So the Mike, I know that when I pull my own personal credit report, I see credit inquiries that I've personally done, let's say for a credit card, as a, for instance, and then there's inquiries that are not by me from other companies. Can you talk more right. about how these differ? Well, there are what are called hard and soft credit inquiries. Soft credit inquiries would be like when you are looking at the credit yourself to determine that, you know, what your credit score is, or if there's been some kind of fraud or abuse on your credit. That's certainly the type of thing that, uh, that uh, is listed, but it really doesn't impact your credit score. In terms of hard credit requests, that would be where actually a creditor is looking at your credit report with the intention of potentially giving you some credit. Those are scored differently. Now, it doesn't hit your credit as, as hard as some people think, but it does actually have an impact over time, especially if you have a lot of them. And the reason for that, again, is it comes down to the fact that it seems then at a certain point as if you're trying to get more credit than you really need. And again, that just points to the to the credit bureaus that you may not be entirely responsible, that having these additional credit cards or having these additional uh, abilities to make the, to these additional charges that you're paying on, that all of those things might make it so that you're not exactly a good credit risk over time. And uh, that's really what they're trying to score with the credit reports. 
So, Mike, I would love to ask you two more questions okay. and then wrap up the call and then the best ways to follow you. Okay. But a lot of us have old accounts that we don't use anymore. Maybe it was our first account years ago. It was a $200 limit or something like that. Do you recommend that we close these or should we keep these open? I would definitely close them. Again, it just reflects the fact that you you don't want to have too much credit out there. It raises some some issues. Now, the one kind of cautionary note that I would put to that is you do want to have a situation where you don't use your credit cards all the way up to the max. Right. So let's just say you've got two credit you say you've got four credit cards. One of them is as you say two hundred dollars. If the other ones are maxed out, I'd probably leave that fourth one open just so that the fact that you've got where there is some unused credit out there, because that will reflect positively on your credit report. But if you have a whole bunch of extra credit cards that are not being used, then shut them down because that will actually improve your credit to have the fewer credit lines that you're just using and still have some room on. So the Mike, I know that sometimes we have to make some hard choices, like I can make two payments this month, but I can't make a third. Maybe what are some debts that we absolutely must pay no matter what? Well, you know, you kind of have to create a hierarchy of uh, priorities, right? Uh, like anything else. And number one, obviously, you need to pay for your home, you need to pay your mortgage, you need to pay for any of what we call secure debts. So you need to make your car payments, for example, because if you don't make those payments, they're going to take your home or they're going to take the car. The worst case scenario, if you fall behind on your credit cards or on other what we call unsecured debts, those would be like medical bills, those would be uh, like various kinds of uh, consumer debts that you would have. Those types of debts, they can make it very unpleasant for you if you don't make the payments, but ultimately for them to get anything from you, they'd have to sue you, they would have to get a judgment against you, and then they'd actually have to take certain steps uh, to be able to take anything from you, like they'd have to garnish or anything like that. But it's not like uh, with a car loan where they can just show up at your house and tow away the car without you knowing about it. Right. So then, Mike, I would love to wrap up our call with action steps if we can. What are some final tips or strategies you might want to recommend? Well, definitely monitoring the credit report, definitely getting the three credit lines, I think, are some excellent steps that people need to take. Some of the other ideas that uh, I suggest to people would be uh, to really, again, reduce the credit card balances. The more that you can do that, the better off you are. Again, you know, people might be putting money into their 401k, for example, and thinking that they're getting a great investment if they're getting 7 or 8% interest. But uh, if you reduce your credit card, you can get 15, 18, you know, 20% inter- 20% interest, essentially, by not paying that interest that you'd have to pay otherwise. Something else that I think is important to know is there are going to be creditors who are going to report to the bureaus and creditors who aren't going to report to the bureaus. So say, for example, someone's got certain kinds of student loans and they think, well, I've got certain kinds of uh, credit you know, that, are, that can be credit lines. That type of creditor might not actually report the payments to the bureau. So you might be making payments to them. You might have a great payment history on them, but uh, it's not going to be reflected on your credit score. So I think it's important that you check the credit reports and be aware of the fact that you've got certain creditors who are going to report to the bureaus and are going to help your credit and certain that aren't. And that's really something that I think people need to be aware of going forward. And then, Mike, what are the best ways to follow or connect with you? Best way I'd say is through my website, getpaidstrategies.com. We have a blog there. We uh, keep all kinds of information updated. And so uh, we'd be happy to hear from people if they want to email us or be in touch with us. Awesome call, Michael. Thank you so much for coming on, and I hope we can do it again soon. Anytime. Fantastic call today with Mike, and he did an outstanding job of breaking down what our personal credit reports are, how to get them free, how to monitor them, and put us on the path to great credit. You can head on over to our site for complete show notes, easy ways to follow and connect with Mike, and more information about his fantastic book, Get Paid Strategies. And don't forget, if you're looking to take advantage of Mike's recommendation on getting your own free credit report by the only source authorized by federal law, head on over to annualcreditreport.com You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White Be sure to hit up IRELpodcast.com for more That's IRELpodcast.com Thanks for listening